Hello everybody, this is Nia Filer and I'm here with the weekly astrological message for the week between the 10th and the 17th of October 2020. This is where I talk about Celestian transits that uh, affect all of us, all zodiac signs. So, this Sunday we are having in the sky a trine from Venus, the planet of relationship, satisfaction, self-value, a trine to Uranus, the planet of change and upgrade. The plant that demands us walking forward and disconnecting from the old and you could say reconnect to the new because the Aquarian knowledge is about remembering things that have been lost, uh, advanced knowledge that has been known but forgotten. So throughout this week and especially on Sunday it's a great time to innovate regarding um, what we do for money, what we do for our own satisfaction, for our own self-value, let in the new into our life. It can include meeting new people or new groups or new friends, but some of us, like me, are under quarantine, so we have to take that into account. <clears throat> All of Israel is still under quarantine, and hopefully soon we'll be able to get out of it, right, Georgia? Anyway, um, Sunday isn't a such an easy day in the sky and we should really watch what we're saying and what we're doing not to over um, overdo things not to exaggerate not to have verbal diarrhea and especially when it comes to honor and prestige watch yourself Monday the 12th Jupiter sextiles Neptune this is a time generally over the next couple of weeks that we can experience elation, a sense that there are mechanisms that are greater, vaster and not completely understood but wise and beneficial that are acting in the background. We could be inspired, we can create, verbalize with the other side, with the muses and uh, indeed bring the inspiration of the eternal to the mundane. Um, on the same day, Monday, Mercury, who is about to go into a serious retrograde, is sextiling Venus, appeasing kind of aspect, an aspect that allows us to better communicate our emotions and needs and to have an easier communication with the people in our relationships. We could communicate better what it is that is important for us and totally understand better what it is that makes us be satisfied and feel that our life and our self have a value. We don't have anything special to say about Tuesday and then Wednesday, ba -bam, the 14th we have the Moon, I'm sorry, we have the Sun opposing Mars. This is a combative time, a time that we should all watch ourselves more in a couple of areas. First of all our aggression, our male side, our need to move forward and get our way can be intensified. We can become more aggressive and combative. Secondly, we can be facing that kind of approach from the world, from people around us, and react to that injustice in a harsher way. And we all become more impulsive. So it is a time to watch more when we cut the salad, when we go to the gym or work out, when we're on the road, and so on. Mercury starts its retrograde for the next three weeks in Scorpio. It's an emotional, intense kind of retrograde. It's a retrograde that could bring us into a much more reflective mode <coughs> regarding the traumas that shaped us, in a sense and maybe help to digest and transform the narrative in our lives into a healthier, more authentic one. Because once we change the narrative, we change our lives. Um, other than that, the 14th has a lot of sextiles and trines in the sky. There's a, a grand um, no, I'm sorry, it's not a grand trine, but there's a lot of trines in the sky and some of them are from the moon to the tree, some of uh, uh, 
first Jupiter and then Pluto and later that Saturn. So Wednesday and Thursday are generally good to progress things with work, career, uh, things that need changing, things that need clarifying, things that need expanding. It's a good time to actually act upon these things not too intensely. And what am I saying not too intensely? Because on Thursday we already hit the Sun square Pluto, which is a time of great intensity as it is, which is a time that our ego needs to be in check, that we need to watch not to be too total or obsessive ourselves. And this is not just a, a, a Sun square Pluto, it's a Sun, uh, uh, as I said, I'm sorry, it's a, a, a Sun uh, squaring uh, Saturn and Jupiter and Pallas Athena as well and then the moon a day later joins the sun and we have a new moon in the 23rd degree of Libra if you want to see how this new moon affects you look at the 23rd 24th degrees of Libra Aries Capricorn and Cancer if you have important things there in your personal chart you'll be more affected by this moon it could have a harsher effect on you. Why do I say harsher? Because this is a harsh new moon. Now in ancient astrology and generally in the tradition of astrology we believe that the new moon signifies something for the next lunar cycle of 29 and a half days. And we can interpret that time of the new moon as the birth of the new moon. As the birth of the new moon we have to watch ourselves and the energy that pass through us and and in our lives and in our psyche and in our hearts at the time, the day before, the day after the new moon as well, because this is a time of imprinting and that energy would carry forth with us into the lunar cycle. And this lunar cycle is not an easy lunar cycle. It is in the sign, diplomatic sign of, of uh, uh, um, Libra, the sign that I actually aspires for justice and, and, and the correction of relationships. But it squares Pluto and Jupiter and uh, Saturn and Pallas Athena with the Sun and it opposes Mars. So indeed this T-square, what we call in astrology a T-square in the sky, is a very combative, harsh, um, demanding kind of aspect that demands us to rise up to the challenge, to deal with the difficulties, to not make a too big a drama out of it, to change what we need to change and to go on feeling strengthened and transformed by the experience, by the overcoming of the challenge. Nevertheless, our emotions, our egos, um, the undercurrents, the emotional undercurrents, our emotional lava underneath the surface at that time, at this time, is explosive. And on a general public level, we need to hope that there's no acts of violence, you know, whether political or not, at this time, no earthquakes or such, and that we all get good news. <laughs> So, um, nevertheless, this new moon has a lot of energy in it, an energy that can help us pick ourselves, our lives up, and bravely, with our chin up, walk forward, walk the road, move through the steps, and that's not a bad thing. So, I do want you to watch your mood around this new moon and even if it is a bit if you find it a bit dampened think of the future of planting of replenishing of healing of realignment of what we can do at this time we can understand how much work we have in front of us that's the dampening feeling we get oh my god so much work so much I have to do but it is a time of mature maturation and if it's done correctly we get to accomplish or um, you know um, 
<coughs> finish our studies and get our diplomas, get our ranks, and carry these ranks, these experiences, these diplomas with us for the rest of our lives. Let me assure you, the time of Corona will pass. The economic implications, however, the social implications, political implications, are going to stay. This is not the time to look back and long for what is lost, but the time to look forward and look for the new, to find the new, to reveal it and to relish in it, to enjoy it, to welcome it, to thank it. I truly believe that if this time of reckoning would have not descended on humanity at this time. Our biggest chance to change our ways, to make the shift from a self-destructive society into a global society that is truly the gardener of its universe, would have been missed. That, that opportunity would have been missed and with it, the great hope and dream of humanity. So I'm very thankful with all the sadness and hurt, and pain, and death, and economic implications that we are all dealing with. Very thankful that this time came to give all of humanity a pause and a recalibration. Let this be a meaningful time for us all. May we all live long and prosper. Bye-bye.